Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna, and today we're going to do my August Battle Let's get going. So it's kind of funny. I kind of did a switch in view for my August. <laughs> So, you know how I did my July wrap up? Well, there was one book that was not supposed to be in July, but I didn't think of it. So that was actually the Daisy Heist that was supposed to be for my August wrap up, but for whatever reason, I included it in my July. <laughs> and then for my August, um, I did this guy, The Night Ends With Fire, and this was supposed to be my September, so... Whatever reason, again, I thought this was for August, <laughs> so jumps on me, but I have one less book in September to read, oh my god. <laughs> so, with that being said though, um, my September team is, I'm probably not going to complete it just because, um, I don't know when the video will be out, it will probably be out by tomorrow, um, tomorrow is Sunday, today is Saturday, so I'm film and this is probably for Tuesday. Um, so, I, <laughs> I'm reading a whole bunch of library books because they have more of a time limit than my September TV yards. <laughs> so, you're gonna ignore my September TV yard. let's pretend that never happened. I always get these strange ideas like out of nowhere, like hey, let's do that, and then that's why I usually not complete my TV yard. But that's okay, um, I am reading some really good books, so there's that, and I'm gonna be reading a lot out of it. So, there's that, and I also kind of want to, I've been thinking about it, so after Book of Read, I kind of want to continue like the whole thriller side, maybe in December, like the middle week or something like that. I kind of want like winter tween, so that's basically like Halloween, but in winter, because even in winter it can be spooky, like you're gonna get lost, you can be cold, hypothermia, so on and so forth, so. I thought it'd be a little fun to just a little bit to extend. I don't know if I'm gonna do this every year, it will be cool, but something to look forward to because I am such in a thriller mood, so yeah, I mean why not extend it to when winter? Because winter can be just as creepy as Halloween, so why not make winter tween? Yay! Let's get going. Starting off with the last structure by Amy Woods, For to Love, All Polly Moth and Henry have inside characters in their own lives. But when the vanishing bookshelf casts its spell, these three unsuspected major will discover that their own stories are every bit as extraordinary as the ones found in the pages in the and books. By unlocking the secrets of the shelves, they find themselves transported to a world of wonder when nothing is as it seems. So I actually really like this. I give it a four stars. It was an interesting read. Uh, I didn't like the magical realism, but they weren't really explained enough or explored enough, I should say. Just because the whole vibe, like the lost bookshop in Ireland and then the lost manuscript by one of the Bronte sisters, I forget which one has been the long. I think it was Charlotte's Bronte, so I don't know, I just like whole, like the whole, like, you know, lost things. And I honestly find it really fascinating, like that they still exist today. I'm, like, I remember doing that book arena a long time when I'm telling you guys with the whole Jane Austen manuscript being lost forever, so it's kind of cool to see that it still actually exists. So we need to find that manuscript. <laughs> but anyways, um, the but I'm, the ending kind of been done better. I found it too quick. It kind of just glossed over as to what was really happening, and that there were some things that didn't really make sense or explain properly, like what happened to Madame Bowden, she was like the housekeeper in the book, but I don't know, her whole character was off. I don't know, like, I don't know how to explain it, it just seems so off, and I'm like, what's, why is she here, what's her purpose, like especially after that plot, after that twist that I found out later in the book, so I'm like, I don't know how to feel about her, like, I don't know if that was really necessary or it just didn't really quite make sense, but yeah, like honestly I don't know, we still don't know what happened to Madame Belden, so that never explained properly, but um, yeah, I was really confused as to what she is, so I did like the mystery for the plot, but the book did drag it off for quite a bit, like I honestly was so done to even though I had like a literally like few chapters left, I was like, just 
gave me the ending. <laughs> like, I'm just so done afterwards. Like, it did not, it should have not been dragged that much, so. But I really did enjoy it. It was a fun me, so, yeah. So, I finally managed to read Silver in the Bone by Alexandra Blacken after so many months of failing. <laughs> In spite of complete times in luck that it asked to be a hollower, as a mortal with no magical talent, she was never meant to break into ancient crypts or compete with sorceresses and cunning folk for the treasures inside. But after her thieving foster father disappeared without so much of her goodbye, it was the only way to keep herself and her brother Cable alive. So, it was interesting. And so I think in the four stars, it was in King Arthur Legend. So if you like if you like the uh, three me and legends, you will probably like this book too. So yeah, I feel like the uh, but I feel like the author could have used the, like the tale of the author better. She only used the Isle of Avalon as a setting and the death of King Arthur as a plot device, which nothing wrong, but it could have been more elaborated and you know just more and be expanded. Um, so and. Now, that's basically it of the book itself, like that was just the only thing. Uh, I wish there was more, like, yeah, so yeah, I wish there was more of it. I love the magic system, the characters seemed entertaining and a twist. I just wanted more of the mythology, even though I am familiar with it, but I just wanted the author to just, just, like, to just touch a little bit more on it, especially for those who aren't really familiar with it, they might not know what's happening, which I don't really know how you can't know a mocking nothing, it's pretty popular in story. But you know, just on the safe side, for those of pe of the people who don't know, I think the other should have just um you know, expanded a little bit more. Um but the second part of the book was really good. Like the first half of the book really did drag on and there was some kind of repetitive because her brother Tamsin, like the Tamsin brothers cattle he was cursed, so the curse part was often repetitive. It didn't really happen like every single chapter, but just kind of throughout the book. So yeah, and that ending, oh, <laughs> I actually enjoyed the ending. So especially what happened to Candle, wow, okay. <laughs> so I'm hoping everything will be good in middle of the beast, which I did buy. So good thing I did enjoy the first book. I think this is better than Lord. I could not get into Lord for whatever reason. So yeah, um, but I really did enjoy that. It. it was a nice tale. I did like the ending. I did like actually like what's happening with Avalon. I thought that was like a cool little twist. So yeah, I don't know what to expect for the sequel, but hopefully it will be good as to the first book. <laughs> Here's a little devil that made me switch it in <laughs> completely. So it is The Night Ends With Fire by a KX song. Ways to obey destined to rule. Ways to obey destined to rebel. The three kingdoms are at war, but Melee's father refuses to rest in the premier drought. Trapped by his opium addiction, he plans to serve Melee for her journey. But when Melee discovers her husband to be as a man of violent, ill tempered man, she realizes that nothing will change for her unless she takes the manners into her own hands. So, as you can tell, it is a Mulan inspired. Um, I did still like it. Uh, and then, kind of, kind of copied throughout. Like the most of the original Disney Mulan. So, yeah, but then there's also like some references from the original Mulan. So, I still enjoyed it though. So, as I said, I enjoyed it and gave it a four stars. It was a really cool read. It had dark magic, mythological aspects, political rivalry, and more. The betrayal. The betrayal was actually, wow, it actually hurt me. Like, oh. <laughs> But also kind of came out of the blue almost and didn't, like the betrayal didn't really felt right in that moment. It could have been done better, but it still hurt me. <laughs> so the romance was okay. It did felt forced and distracting, but I left the relationship between the stepmother and Meeling. We finally have a nice stepmother. Yay! Like so long I've been meeting evil stepmothers. I'm like, dude, I promise you there are some nice stepmothers in the world. <laughs> I promise you. And so, yeah, I did like the dark magic and the visions of the sea dragon spirit that had made attention 
I think the reveal of Miri's true identity could have been better. So, I don't know. It just felt meh. Like, it deserved more. And so, and also about Miri's identity, I'm surprised no one else had figured it out until the, towards the end of the book. I'm like, how did you all not notice? <laughs> I don't know. Like, and I'm hoping she kind of discusses her voice, which, which was also another question I wanted to ask. Like, did she have to disguise her voice? So, because, like, wouldn't they be able to figure out if it was a female voice instead of a male? So, I don't know how she did her voice, but hopefully she disguised it. So we can assume that. Um, but yeah, that, like, the, the identity could have been so much better. So the Ch there were some Chinese texts, which I don't mind, but I wish they were translated because I don't know Chinese at all, so I don't really know what they mean. So a little bit of translation could have been better along the way, so... And it's just cool to see those texts, but I do want translation of it. Just to make sure, like, oh, this it actually fits in with the sentences, because sometimes there won't be translations and then like the text and then it just wouldn't make sense with the sentence so i don't know but yeah i also find in books sometimes to be unevenly paced before picking up the speed they're like in the actual scenes they are only in a few pages that should have been slightly longer and there's just not enough build up for big moments like the identity part that again that could have been better but um it was so fun reading it got dark magic with biological so it was a really fun reading and I did enjoy it and my final book is Dark Star Rising and um, Dark Star Burning Ash Falls Away by Emily Wengel the demon gods have risen skies and has fallen to the colonizer and Lan and Zen have chosen sides but they will not fight together Though Lan inherited the power of the Silver Dragon, she understands the path she must take. She believes the demon gods to be the cause of war, conflict, and turmoil. Once she knows that if the Rathians manage to find one of the legendary beings, their army will be unstoppable. To save her kingdom and her people, Lan will need to find the only mythical weapon incapable of eliminating the demon gods forever, the God Slayer. I give it four stars. It was so, such a fun read. So yeah, I think it was it was such a fun read, and I think it was a good end for the duology. Although there are some things that could have been more explored, so I don't know if she will make a third book. Probably not because it's a duology. And so yeah, like I like the magic and the setting, and the ending did felt bittersweet. So uh, <laughs> like it did crack me almost. So like I don't know, it just felt really bittersweet. And there was a lot of info dumping as well, but I still think this book was not enough to get through everything. Like, in all honesty, if it's like the fine finale, um, it should have been a little bit longer because I feel like there's some topics that could have been touched upon more. And so, yeah, um, I did love like that description and the beautiful images and like the black tortoise. That was like quite an interesting idea, so I did really like how the black tortoise was included it's, it was like whole, like with the whole dark magic kind of thing so i don't feel like the dragon spirit was also a little bit more on the dark magic but i didn't really feel anything light about it so i don't know it was a pretty cool read to like to see those two, like the dragon and the black tortoise it was a pretty cool read so so yeah, so it was a good reading month, and they gave out a lot of stars, so that's great. Um, I, I think everything had four stars. Wow, that never happened. Everything they had four stars. Wow, good job. <laughs> but anyways, uh, those are all the books I have read. Let me know what you guys have read in August, and please like, comment, subscribe, so you'll be notified every time I post, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!